Well, you know, I, we have a, a great following. We uh, do shows on Wednesdays and Fridays from uh, 9 o'clock on Wednesdays and 8 o'clock on Fridays, both uh, Eastern Time. And we've been doing it for about four years. And uh, we've got a great following. We've got about 1,700, almost 2,000, probably by now. I haven't checked it. We've been busy a while. Mm -hmm. um, but we've also uh, opened up our own retail store. Yeah, we opened up our own retail store. We're, we're dealers in uh, Prima Luce Lab, Core Scientific, everything. And you can check us out at astroworldtelescopes.com. Yeah, you guys started in the basement, right? On we the couch? <laughs> yeah, we did. And, and now a lot of people know this. So, uh, you know, this is, this is an exclusive, okay? It was originally, the show was originally called Cosmic Charlie and Declination Dan. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, wow. so, so it, it, was, it was CCDD, and, and the show, the, the studio was called CCD Squared. Okay. So kind of, it, it, that was in the days of CCD, yeah. so it kind of did a twofold thing, but it was, so it was, it was kind of weird. It was a very corny, but we were on a basement on a on thing and talking about the purchase of my first telescope where I smacked some lady in the head on a train. <laughs> now, do you knew, do much narrow band imaging? That's all I do. Oh, okay. That's all I do. I, I'm on Long Island. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so I'm on I'm Bortle, well, I don't even think they make a scale anymore. So, uh, they're Bortle 8 plus now, you know, or 9. Um, I'm, I'm 25 minutes away from the city. So, Manhattan is kind of crazy. So, I, I, that's all I do. I use my uh, 3 nanometer Optolung filters. Um, with Those are really tight, 3 nanometers. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, with that light pollution, you gotta, you know, you need, you need all the help you can get, <laughs> you know. So, so uh, you know, I went from, I, I bought the twelves, wasn't good enough. I bought the sevens, wasn't good enough. So I went down to the threes when they came out, and I'll tell you, I took a, I took a picture, of, um, uh, the horse nebula last winter, uh, Alan Attack, nice and tame, no halos. It was, it was a beautiful, beautiful thing. I, I loved it. So I was talking to the spig guy. Here earlier and he was telling me about how they take really narrow filters with like with faster scope and what they do is they actually tilt them ever so slightly to actually shift the transmission spectrum on them so that it stays right on the band pass if you've got an object that's further away that might be a red shift. Tell me about the scopes you use. Well I, 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 I got really lucky. I, I just had the chance to purchase an Astrophysics 130. Nice. Yeah, so it's, it's the GT, uh, it's, it's just the GT version, not the GTX, which is the newer one. But uh, a friend of mine had two of them. And I've known him for 30 years. For seven years I've been sitting it, seeing it underneath his bed. Has never moved, never seen the light of day. And I'm like, yo, no, nothing, no, no first light, no nothing. He's, he's a visual observer one that he used and he didn't want to mess up the second one. So he's like, okay, you know, what are you doing with that? Buddy, come on. It's sitting there. It's a waste. It's an astrophysics scope. What are you doing? It's like, well, it wasn't really, I uh, wasn't thinking about selling it, but if, I'll sell it to you if you want it. And I was like, okay, how much you want for it? And he told me and I said, no problem. I've been using that one ever since. Um, I've play, I'm a rock guy. So, so anything from the Red Cat 51 to, I had the Explore Scientific uh, 120 both carbon fiber and aluminum. Now, as somebody who's had both the carbon fiber and the aluminum, did you notice much difference in your shift as temperature changes? Yeah, yes, I, I have a little bit. You know, it definitely takes a longer time to cool down that 127 tube. Okay. You know, so, but you know, the carbon fiber, the best thing about the carbon fiber is the weight difference. Yeah. The, an EQ8R mount, mm -hmm. put that scope on there, I'm a short guy mm. with no upper body strength. <laughs> so I'm putting it up there, and it, it's it's a challenge. It's a challenge, uh, but you know, but I'm telling you, I got some really good pictures from both scopes. This is how I started. I bought one filter, and it was a hydrogen alpha filter. Sure. And I, all, I had was a mono planetary camera, okay. and I went and experimented with that. And I was just amazed at the, like the details that I could get with that H alpha filter. And is that something you would recommend to other people? Absolutely, I agree with you 100% on that. The H alpha filter gives you the most transmission out of anything, especially when you're shooting at, like, let's say the, the California Nebula. Really strong in H alpha. And you get the benefit, whether you're doing 7, 12, or 3 nanometers, it doesn't really matter. You're going to get that benefit of blocking all the light out in your area. You know, so you're getting that nice restrictive band pass with strong signal. Yes. And that is just an amazing thing to start with. I would not start. Start with the HA, go to the oxygen, yep. and then end it with the sulfur and get the little details that you missed. And then you, you'll get, you know, I, I mean, my buddy Eric, who's watching the camera, has a really good video on his channel as well about how to, how to make that Hubble palette 
with the with the uh, the narrowband filters. Mm -hmm. um, he, did you use the uh, NBZ for that, if I remember right? Uh, I've done it with the NBZ as well as the little Astro Pixel Processor. There you go. So uh, Astro Pixel Processor and the NBZ. So um, it's it's a really good fun time with the channel and everything, and getting all this kind of stuff together. We have four people on the show that all contribute on different levels. We have Pete, who's in, uh, Pete Myers, who's floating around somewhere, um, and he does all the high-end stuff, the plane waves and all that kind of stuff. We got Eric, who's the ZWO ASI Air Master and William Optics. Eagle guy, I'm the Prima Luce and all the rest of the stuff. And then we got, uh, we got Jesse on the show as well, who adds like <laughs> the, the fun to the show, and she's also very knowledgeable about actually using an EQ8R and a 127 as well. So it's a lot of fun. Hey, Dana, it is awesome to see something so close to New York City doing imaging, and have a good luck. <laughs> oh, <done>. uh, <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Thank you so